The crash of November Su 345 Romeo over the mountains of Montana on October 17th was a tragedy that took the lives of Mark Anderson and his two daughters, Lainey and Ellie. It's easy to think of this as a simple case of weather turning dangerous. But as we dive into the facts, we realize there's so much more to it. This was a situation where the aircraft was physically trapped by its own limitations, the weather, and the unforgiving terrain. Let's break down what really happened to November 2345 Romeo and why despite all efforts, the flight couldn't escape the mountains. To understand what went wrong, we first need to take a deeper look at the aircraft itself, the Piper PA-23-250F Aztec. This was a 1981 model, the last of the Aztec family, and it's important to note that it was powered by naturally aspirated Lycoming IO540 engines. Unlike the turbocharged version, this aircraft didn't have that extra power boost when it needed it most. Now let's break down why that's important. When you're flying at 13,000 feet, the aircraft needs every bit of power to maintain altitude, especially in challenging conditions. For a non-turbocharged engine, the performance starts to degrade above 5,000 feet when on a single engine. So even before the icing started, this aircraft was already operating near its limits. Let's say the engine was compromised by ice or another issue. Suddenly, this aircraft couldn't climb or even maintain altitude. In the case of a turbocharged Aztec, the single engine service ceiling is around 15,000 feet. But for the non-turbo model like November 2345 Romeo, that ceiling drops significantly to around 5,000 feet. At 13,000 to 14,000 feet, even a fully functional Aztec would be at the edge of its capability. But when one engine starts failing, it's no longer a matter of can it climb, it's simply a matter of can it stay in the air. That's why the pilot was quickly running out of options. The combination of icing and a struggling engine at those altitudes meant that November Tatsusa 3, 4, 5 Romeo had no buffer left. When we talk about aircraft performance, many pilots will tell you about the single engine service ceiling. In November 2 to 3, 4, 5 Romeo's case, with both engines working, this aircraft might have been able to manage for a while at 12,000 feet. But with icing, that performance drops quickly and with a weakened engine. Well, as the numbers show, the margin for error was almost non-existent. And as we'll see next, this lack of power was compounded by severe icing in a hostile environment. Now let's talk about the weather, because icing was the main issue, but not just any kind of icing. This was severe, clear ice or supercooled large droplets, SLD, which are particularly dangerous. At 1615, when the pilot made his distress call, the freezing level was around 8,500 feet MSL. For the pilot flying at 13,000 feet, that's right in the danger zone for icing. It's not just about a little ice, it's about supercooled liquid droplets that can accumulate rapidly and overwhelm the aircraft's de-icing boots. The Aztec's boots are effective at de-icing, but they don't stop the ice from forming, they simply break the ice off once it's accumulated. And with clear ice or SLD, the boots can only provide so much protection. It's like putting a small patch on a big problem. But that's not the only weather issue here. The temperature at Sealy Lake was 11 degrees Celsius with a dew point of 2 degrees. This suggests the environment was cold enough for visible moisture in the air to freeze when it came into contact with the aircraft. What we're looking at is a situation where the aircraft was flying right into dangerous icing conditions, but the pilot had no choice. When you're flying through the mountains at that altitude, going around these areas isn't really an option. The Bob Marshall Wilderness is one of the most rugged regions in the U.S. with no flat ground to land on and limited escape routes. To make matters worse, the winds were strong at 17 knots from the west, and this likely created mountain wave turbulence. This is a type of turbulence where the air flows over mountains and creates strong downdrafts. So not only was the aircraft facing icing and engine failure, but it also had to fight strong downdrafts that could easily overwhelm the aircraft's ability to climb or even maintain altitude. This combination of severe icing strong winds and mountain wave turbulence is exactly what we mean when we say the aircraft was in a trap. The margins for safe flying were razor thin. Now let's take a closer look at something that's easy to overlook, but could have played a major role in the events that led up to the crash, the left engine issue. The Piper Aztec, as we mentioned earlier, is powered by fuel-injected Lycoming IO540 engines. This means the aircraft is not susceptible to carburetor icing, which is common in older piston engine aircraft. However, induction icing remains a significant risk, particularly at higher altitudes where the temperatures are colder. 
Induction icing occurs when the air filter becomes blocked by ice restricting airflow to the engine. If the air filter gets iced over the engine, can struggle to maintain proper airflow and power, leading to a dramatic reduction in engine performance. This is particularly dangerous in a naturally aspirated engine like the IO540, which relies heavily on clean, unrestricted air intake to generate power. The Aztec was equipped with a built-in alternate air door that opens automatically when the air filter becomes obstructed. This mechanism ensures the engine can still receive airflow from inside the cowling bypassing the frozen filter. However, there's an important question that needs to be answered. Did this system work correctly? If the alternate air door didn't open as designed, or if there was another malfunction in the induction system, the engine could have been starved of air, leading to reduced power. In high altitude situations like this, even a small reduction in engine performance can quickly become critical. Investigators will be examining the aircraft's induction system closely, especially looking for any signs of ice buildup on the engine components or evidence that the alternate air system failed. They'll also look at whether the engine was suffering from any mechanical issues unrelated to icing, as the left engine was reported to have been underperforming during the final stages of the flight. This is one of the pivotal points in understanding how the aircraft's power loss affected its ability to escape the mountains. We're left with a key question, could the induction icing have been the primary cause of the engine failure, or did the engine have an existing issue that was exacerbated by the icing conditions? Only a thorough examination of the engine's internals can answer that, but the interaction between icing and induction blockage is likely at the heart of the issue. Let's turn now to the critical role terrain played in this accident. From flight data and ADSB signals, we know that the pilot attempted to descend into a drainage area north of Goat Mountain, likely seeking lower terrain to escape the icing. On the surface, this may have seemed like a good decision the aircraft was trying to find safer ground. However, the terrain itself became a trap. The Bob Marshall Wilderness is an incredibly rugged and steep region. As the aircraft descended, the pilot believed he was heading toward a safer lower valley, but the terrain was still rising in many places. Even as the aircraft descended, it encountered rising ridgelines ahead. In mountainous regions like this, lower terrain is relative. Valleys and drainages often rise steeply again, trapping aircraft in narrow hazardous paths. The pilot attempted to use the drainage path to escape the icing and head toward lower terrain. However, this drainage was still surrounded by higher terrain, making it impossible for the aircraft to clear the obstacles in front of it. Even though the aircraft was descending, it was heading toward an area where the mountains rose quickly, leaving no clear way out. This highlights a common trap in mountainous flying. Descending does not always guarantee safety. In fact, descending toward higher terrain can make matters worse, especially when the aircraft is already compromised by icing and engine failure. The pilot's decision to try this drainage path was not a mistake, but a logical attempt to escape. However, the terrain simply didn't allow for it. The most devastating part of this is how close the pilot was to finding safer ground. Had the aircraft been able to fly into a wider valley or a lower area with fewer obstacles, the outcome might have been different. But the reality was that the drainage path, while appearing to offer an escape, led directly into rising terrain, further trapping the aircraft. In the end, the aircraft was boxed in by the combination of rising terrain, weakening engine performance, and severe icing. The pilot made every effort to escape, but the geography itself limited the options available, leading to a tragic outcome. The concept of lower terrain can be misleading in this context, as even descending does not guarantee safety in mountainous regions where the ground can rise faster than the aircraft can descend. By now, we've broken down the aircraft's limitations, the icing conditions, the terrain, and the engine issues. But the real reason November 2345 Romeo couldn't escape the mountains isn't just about what happened at the moment of the emergency, it's about the combined factors that trapped the aircraft. Let's review first aircraft performance ceiling too low. The aircraft was already flying at the edge of its performance limits. A non-turbocharged twin at 13,000 feet was operating on very thin margins. When one engine started to fail, the aircraft simply didn't have enough power to continue climbing, let alone escape icing conditions. Second icing was severe and possibly SLD. The freezing level was dangerously close to the aircraft's altitude and the icing conditions were likely much more severe than initially thought. With supercooled large droplets, SLD, the de-icing boots, were not enough to keep up with the accumulation of ice. Third terrain offered no viable escape. The Bob Marshall Wilderness is one of the most rugged terrains in the U.S. Even when descending toward lower terrain, the pilot was still trapped by rising ridges. 
The terrain itself made it nearly impossible for the aircraft to clear the obstacles with a weakened engine and icing conditions. Fourth induction icing may have weakened the critical engine. The loss of power in the left engine possibly due to induction icing compounded the issue. The alternate air door should have opened to prevent engine starvation, but we still don't know whether it worked as it should have. Even if it did, the aircraft was already so far behind the power curve that it couldn't maintain altitude or escape. Fifth, the pilot actually made all the correct calls. Despite all of this, the pilot did everything he could. He requested to climb, asked for lower terrain, and declared an emergency. There was no reckless decision-making here. The pilot was actively trying to escape the conditions, but the aircraft was simply out of options. This wasn't a failure of decision-making, it was a failure of physics. The aircraft in those specific conditions simply couldn't make it. With icing a weakening engine and rising terrain, the odds were stacked against him from the start. The real reason November 2345 Romeo couldn't escape the mountains is that it was a perfect storm of aircraft limitations, weather, and terrain that trapped the aircraft in a situation with no viable escape. The pilot did his best, but unfortunately sometimes even the best efforts aren't enough when the margins for safety have been completely erased.